So I'm here today with Jim DeCesar from the firm's accounting and auditing department, here to talk to you today about leases and some of the changes that are coming down the pike with respect to changes in the way they're accounted for. And so Jim, just from a big picture perspective, historically the only leases that end up on the balance sheet were what? Uh, capital leases. Okay. And so the other lease that most people tend to uh, enter into are operating leases. And those have historically been accounted for in the income statement, but that's changing, isn't it? It is, yes. So previously there were some criteria that would make it an operating lease versus a capital lease. Um, that accounting and those, those criteria are changing slightly, which is going to force more of these leases onto the balance sheet. So what types of, of equipment or assets are we talking about that would end up on a balance sheet that might have historically been in the income statement? So it's really going to be all leases. I mean, there is going to be some dollar value that you're going to be able to use for a threshold, but buildings vehicles, equipment, but even copiers, fax machines, printers, items in the in the office that they're using that you previously haven't thought of as a lease. So things that you don't even necessarily own are now going to end up on your balance sheet? Yeah, exactly. So there's there's going to now be an asset listed and there's going to be an obligation listed and this is going to this is going to change in some cases drastically what's what a company's or individuals balance sheets look like. Now as a business owner, I have to think, what do I care? This sounds like a bunch of accounting, you know, rigmarole that doesn't necessarily have a lot of impact to me, but it does in fact affect some of the financial statement covenants, doesn't it? It does, and covenants, uh, as you just mentioned, are gonna be the, the main area that's affected by this. I mean, you have covenants with the bank, you need to be in compliance with them, and yet the ratios they've been using are now gonna have to change, in some cases drastically, in order to address the fact that you're gonna have these these assets and this obligation on your, on your balance sheet. Yeah, and I guess many business owners haven't really dealt with a lot of covenant issues in the last several years. It's been a very profitable time for a lot of our clients, but um, I guess there is a planning element to this. No, because I guess as things change, you could find yourself all of a sudden in violation of something that you haven't had to think about in a long time. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you, you could be negotiating um, a new loan now, a new line of credit now, or in, in the next year or two. And in either case, this needs to be in the forefront of your mind, just so you understand how the covenant's going to be structured, what your balance sheet might look like when the leases are on there, and how difficult it may be to meet that covenant. You might need to do some negotiation with the bank and really help them understand what type of leases are going to be on your balance sheet. And again, from a timing standpoint, this is applicable to what year? So it's applicable to the year ended December 31st, 2020. Okay. And so that seems far, far out, but as we're, as we're talking right now and you think about this planning process and you might need to map out what the balance sheet look like so you can have that discussion about a covenant. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. So if you have any questions, if there's anything we can do to help you get out in front of this, please reach out to the team. Jim DeCesar would be happy to help you. We appreciate you taking the time to listen to this.